Okay, so we just had a lab, and in the lab you were asked to um, measure the static frictional force on an object um, on a ramp when the ramp is being lifted up at a certain angle. And at one angle, the ramp was steep enough to have the static friction hold, break free, and the, and the block started to slide down. And there was a formula that showed up in the, um, in the handout, which had some students questioning where do we get this formula. So let me just show you um, really quickly in this YouTube video how to go about getting that formula. So what we had was we had a ramp and we had a sled or a box on the ramp and this sled was just mass m. So we've talked about it in class how would we break this thing up into two different vectors well one of the things I would do is I would say there's a force going parallel to the hill which was m g sine of the angle by the way this is the angle and then there was another force called the parallel force sorry that's the parallel force there was another one called the perpendicular force which was going this way and this was m g cosine the angle okay <coughs> So that was done in class, and we were studying that. So there are other forces. So we talked about um, in chapter four, we should always show the free body diagram, meaning show every force that's acting on this object. Well, what's another force acting on the object? The normal force. So the normal force would be going this way. And the normal force would be equal and opposite to this thing right here. And this would be mg cosine of the angle. What's there another force? Well, if there is friction, we have a frictional force. If this sled is going to slide down the hill, then the frictional force will be going the opposite way, up the hill. So we have this force of friction, and we will call it force of friction equals mu times the force normal. Okay. But the force normal equals something. So the force normal equals this stuff right here. So instead of saying that, I could say force of friction equals mu. And let me just write this down. M G cosine of the angle. So when this, um, and those, those are the four forces. So we've taken the weight vector and we've broken the weight vector up into two completely separate forces. We're not going to say weight equals mass times gravity. This is a piece of the weight pulling the box down the hill. This is a piece of the weight pulling the box vertically into the hill. Um, we found the normal force. The normal force is equal and opposite to the um, perpendicular force pulling the box into the hill. This is like Newton's third law of motion. If the block is pushing into the ramp, well, the ramp then is pushing back onto the block. So we have equal and opposite here. And then because there is friction, friction is based on uh, mu times the normal force. And the normal force equals this, so I substitute it and I have the normal force equaling this. So if I were to draw it one more time, this is what I really get if I draw it one more time. So you see, when the box is not moving, static frictional forces are holding it there. So up until the moment when it breaks free, these two things are going to be equal. So if these two things here are going to be equal, um, they would basically cancel out, and that means there's no acceleration on this particular box. And that's what happened before it broke free. So when it we didn't had break free, this side was equal to this side. So we had mu mg cosine of the angle equals mg sine of the angle. And if we were to go and we were to d divide this both sides by this, mg cosine of the angle MG and cosine of well, the angle. this goes out. So on the left side of the equation, you just have mu by itself. And on the right side of the equation, we have this. Um, the m will cancel out with the m. The g will cancel out with the g. Sine over cosine. In a trigonometry class, they will teach you about that. But there's a function. The sine over the cosine is called the tangent. So this equals the tangent of the angle. So with all that said, what happens is if you put a sled or a block of wood or something onto a ramp and you slowly lift up the angle and slowly lift up the angle and slowly lift up the angle, the force going down, mg sine of the angle, is always equal and opposite to the force going up 
mu mg cosine of the angle. And the last moment when that happens, when they're no longer equal and opposite, that's when this thing here will break free. And when this thing here breaks free, you will be dealing with kinetic friction, which means this number becomes much, much smaller, and thus this will be bigger, and now the block will slide. So you were studying the maximum coefficient of static friction. So you lifted up the ramp until you just broke it free. So the moment before you broke it free, this was equal to this, and this piece became this piece. And if I clean if it, if I were to say, you know, mu mg cosine of the angle equals mg sine of the angle, as I did down here, and then I do some division, you'll see that this will become mu equals tangent of the angle. Okay. So we had that formula that popped up in a lab um, of friction, and some students were saying, where did that come from? I have no idea what that means. And that's what it means. So at that one particular angle, the block will slide free. If it's less than that angle, it won't slide free. So you have to lift it up until the moment when you break this uh, frictional force here. Tangent. Tangent. So you have mu on one side equals tangent on the other.